Hello, everyone. We are going to get started. Happy Thursday. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. Um, my name is Jenna and I'm with Emerging Destinations. We represent cool companies in cool places. You can also see up on your screen there, we are being joined today by Herman, who is an expedition leader for Iceland Pro Cruises. He's located in Reykjavik, so he's coming to us from his evening time. So thank you, Herman, for joining us um, on today's webinar. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, before we get started, though, with the presentation, I am going to just take a quick minute to introduce our Emerging Destinations portfolio to you. So, of course, today we are talking about Iceland Pro Cruises. Uh, we also have a couple other um, accounts in our Iceland portfolio as well. So we also represent Iceland Pro Travel. They are a DMC in Iceland. And then uh, our newest member to our Iceland portfolio is Hotel Isla, which is located in Reykjavik. So um, if you have any questions about any of those or any of the other clients that you see up there on our screen, I'm not going to take uh, the time to introduce all of them to you because we have uh, quite the growing portfolio. So if you have any questions about any of the others that you see on your screen, you have my email address there as well. So it's just Jenna at EmergingDestinations.com. So if you do have questions about them or if you want to schedule a private training for you and your team, we have tons of um, great digital information on those accounts as well. So if you want any of that, then please feel free to reach out to me. Couple of housekeeping items to go over before we get started. So um, as always, today's webinar will be recorded. So if you do have to step away, if you join late, have to take off early, we will be uh, sending the recording out to everybody in our webinar follow up. So if you do miss anything, don't worry, we will uh, send that over to you. And our webinars also get posted on our Emerging Destinations website and our Emerging Destinations YouTube channel. So if you do want to check out any of the other Iceland webinars that we've done in the past, you can find those on there. Um, and lastly, we would love if you uh, participate. So today's webinar is, as I mentioned before, going to be um, provided to us by Herman, who is an expedition leader for Iceland Pro Cruises. So this is slightly different from anybody that we've had give us a presentation presentation on Iceland Pro Cruises in the past. So he's going to provide us with a little bit of um, the day in the life on board uh, the Ocean Diamond and tell us a little bit about the itineraries that they have uh, for Iceland and about the ship itself. So please feel free to type through any questions that you do have throughout the presentation. Um, at the end, we will do a quick Q&A. So we'll try to get to as many of those questions as possible. Of course, time permitting, we want to um, value your time. So if there are a few that we don't get to, um, please don't worry, we will make sure to get those answered to you and sent out in our webinar follow up as well. So. I think that's all for me, Herman. I'm going to pass it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Jenna. Um, yeah, I want to introduce myself briefly before I start. Uh, my name is Herman Helkusson. Uh, I am from Iceland uh, and I live in Reykjavik at the moment. I've been working with uh, Iceland Pro Cruises since uh, 2015 or, or simply uh, since the company started. And I started off as a tour guide, uh, worked my up, uh, way up to assistant expedition leader in the following year. And then since 2017, I have been working as uh, an expedition leader on board the Ocean Diamond. But uh, I will talk a little bit more about my duties uh, later on in this uh, webinar. Uh, I really want to focus today on our Iceland circumnavigation. We have uh, this is like our main cruise that, that we do uh, nine times next year, but we also have uh, one tour at the start of the season that is in May. It's called Best of Ice, and uh, that trip is uh, seven, uh, sorry, eight days, so so two days shorter. But uh, I will focus on the Iceland navigation. Uh, so what we try to do uh, while we are cruising around Iceland, we try to hit uh, or, or visit the smaller ports. As you can see on this map here, uh, we visit 10 different places around the island and we start in Reykjavik. You can see in the bottom left corner and we also end the cruise in Reykjavik. 
and then we do a clockwise tour around uh, Iceland. Yeah, the reason why we try to visit a smaller port is simply uh, we have an expedition concept, which means we, we are more focusing on the nature and staying a little bit outside of the main touristy areas. Uh, so, so our passengers can enjoy a lot of the nature, but of course we visit also a lot of the highlights uh, in Iceland. Um, yeah. First bit about uh, Ocean Diamond, uh, our, our ship. It's uh, 124 meters long or 407 feet. Uh, the breadth uh, is 60 meters or 52 feet. Draft 4.9 meters or 16 feet. Maximum speed is 50 knots. It was launched in 1974, but had a few uh, relations uh, since then. And we finished uh, the last renovation process in 2019, even though one of our common areas was just finished this year. So everything inside the vessel is uh, brand new, even the vessel itself is quite old. old. Uh, we have up to 210 passengers and our crew is then 106 in total. And here you can see uh, our deck plan. You can see we have a passenger's cabin from deck three up to deck seven. And then we have, uh, for example, on deck three, also the main restaurants, the galley. Uh, on deck four, we have the reception, our club lounge, which is uh, the main bar and also a smaller restaurant. And then uh, one deck above on deck five, we have the main lounge, which is our lecture area. And uh, also the library and deck six, we, six, we have like an, an, a pool deck that where we have uh, sometimes something going on, some events when the weather is good, a fitness area uh, and a small bar are as well. And uh, on deck six is on the bridge. We have an open bridge policy, so our passengers, they can uh, come up to the bridge and get to know something about the nautical things. And then on deck seven, we have the suites, uh, one bar well and the so-called observation lounge. But I will show you uh, some of the common areas inside the Ocean Diamond. And like I mentioned earlier, this uh, was renovated in, uh, yeah, most of it was finished in 2019. Uh, the last area was finished this year. So this is the main restaurant on deck three uh, called Akla uh, Restaurant. Uh, and you can see we focused uh, a little bit this brown and blue colors, which uh, turned out to be, look very well, in my opinion, at least. And uh, here's then the observation lounge, which is on deck seven, our top deck. That is like more a relaxing area, so people can read a book, enjoy the landscape while we are sailing. And in the evening, we have an open bar in this uh, observation lounge. Then uh, this is the newest area uh, uh, that was finished here, the main lounge. This is where we have all our lectures, uh, entertainment, um, yeah, port talks where we present the following, day, etc. So this uh, is also a nice uh, um, lounge, and we really like it. We, we we did four circumnavigations this year, and everything was working very well in the main lounge. In this new lounge, and then this is the main bar area the club lounge this is more more entertainment a little bit noise we play some live music as you can see we have a piano player um uh, playing uh, in the afternoons and also uh, uh, sorry about it and also um in the evenings um yeah this is, is for people that want to have so some more fun we have beer taste in that area. We have um, singing entertainment and so on. And uh, then just an example of our cabins. This is a cabin on deck six. 
they're all in this style. Uh, so uh, also uh, like the other areas of the ship, everything newly renovated. Uh, yeah, I really want to talk a little bit about uh, the ports we are visiting. Uh, as you know, we we start in Reykjavik, but we don't have any official program there to do the embarkation and the disembarkation. So if you look to the left uh, of the map, there is a town called Stikisholmer, and that is our first port. And I just want to show you briefly pictures of the port we are visiting. Like I mentioned earlier, we, we have quite a small ship, so we really want to go alongside where the bigger ships can not go alongside, which uh, makes uh, yeah, the experience of the guests quite nice. Uh, this is Stikis Holmer on our first day, so to say, after uh, embarkation day. After Stikis Holmer, we had to East Fjordur, which is in the West Fjords of Iceland. After Isa Fjordur, we had to the North, to a small town called um, Siklu Fjordur. Uh, after that, use our zodiacs. We have like 18 zodiacs on board. Uh, sometimes even our ship is too big to go alongside in the smallest ports. And then we have these zodiac we use to tender our passengers to shore. But I will get uh, in more detail to that later on. Uh, but this is Hise Island that we'll also visit. Then also still in the north, we visit Flate in Skjalvandi, where we focus on bird watching, including the puffins. Then we have uh, still in the north, we go to the whale watching capital of Iceland, which is Husavik. Uh, maybe some of you have seen the uh, Eurovision movie uh, with Will Ferrell. Everything was filmed in that town of Husavik. And like I mentioned there, we do our whale watching and we actually stay overnight in Hosevik. You can see we're very close to the town center. Our vessel is here just basically in the town. So our passengers really like to go out in the evening, visit the GOC baths or, or to go to the bar or just walk around uh, the town. After a week, we head to East Iceland to a to uh, town called Sidis Fjörður, small uh, town of 700 people. And after Sidis Fjörður, we to Southeast Iceland, to the smallest place we visit, Jupivover. On that day, we uh, visit, for example, the Glacier Lagoon. Uh, and then our last stop around the island, the Westman Islands. And uh, the main island is called Heimae, and there we go alongside. So uh, what we try to do on board the Ocean Diamond is we try, we really want to bring Iceland on board. So uh, we think we are different from the other companies in that way. We have Icelandic guide, we have Icelandic entertainment, we have um, Icelandic food, like you can see on the picture here. This is our uh, hotel manager, Dimitar. He's buying fresh Icelandic fish uh, in Isafjörður in the West Fjord. Do that uh, for every cruise, so passengers can get the really fresh Icelandic fish. We also have a lamb, Icelandic lamb on board, Icelandic breakfast corner. Maybe some of you have heard about the yogurt called Skir. We have that among many other things in that corner. And then, of course, uh, last but not least, we have Icelandic beer and also draft beer on board. Uh, then we have uh, our so-called expedition team, and this is the team that uh, is going to guide our passengers in the shore excursions we are offering or drive the Zodiacs and they also do an entertainment. What we try to do, we have uh, normally around 10 to 12 uh, people in the expedition team. All of these people are Iceland specialists. 
they specialize themselves in uh, specific fields. Some of them are geologists, historians, etc. And we try also to keep the, yeah, you can see the, uh, quite, yeah, quite, quite different ages also of the team. So you get uh, a lot of different information from each one of them. Uh, normally in the expedition team, we have about four to five local Icelanders. Uh, but uh, the remaining staff is a very experienced uh, Iceland, also Iceland specialists that have maybe lived here for 20 or 30 years. So all of the people know a lot about Iceland. Uh, the expert team also we work. This is just one of the three departments we have on board and we really we work together with the hotel department, uh, which uh, takes care of the um, food and the cabins and so on and then we also work together in uh, with the nautical team which is the captain and the deck boys uh, to organize the technical schedule and that is uh, one of my re main responsibilities as the expedition leader i meet the captain every single morning we check uh, how the weather is uh, at that time and uh, sometimes we need to make an a b c and even d if the weather is bad, so there's a lot of organizing and a lot of uh, reacting to the weather that can be here in Iceland. Sometimes it can can get quite bad, but normally in the summertime, it's it's quite good. But I, I mentioned organize that. Then I organize all of the guides. You see on these pictures, I divide them into shore excursions uh, that they will take our teachers on. And I organize also the Zodiac tours or, or, or the shuttle service or, or whatever we are using the Zodiac for. Um, and I also do uh, lectures on board among uh, many uh, other people in the expedition team. Normally do lectures about birds, geology, history, Vikings, Icelandic language and whales. Um, like I yeah, mentioned earlier, this is uh, this is how it looks like when we're doing a Zerg operation. Uh, we have 18 such Zergs on board, which is uh, enough for almost all of our passengers. Normally, when we are doing a Zodiac cruise, we take uh, nine boats or 10 boats out at a time, and we do like two rounds. So every passenger, of course, is able to go uh, out on a Zodiac cruise. And uh, the Zodiac cruises are included in the um, cruise itself. And they're actually very popular among our passengers because uh, when doing the cruises, uh, which is maybe five times every Iceland circumnavigation, we try to discover the wildlife and the landscape around us. But of course, on these small boats, we can go uh, way closer to everything than on the big ship which is very convenient for the expedition style we are offering. And as you can see here on this picture, uh, we have uh, 10 passengers in each of the Zodiacs. So we take 11 or 12, but the general rule is that we take uh, 10 passengers each boat. And we have uh, on our Iceland circumnavigation, we have done it for a very long time. Of course, we change something every year. We look at our, the reviews after every year and see what we can improve. Uh, but the schedule is very tight. We try to keep our passengers or at least occupied the whole time. They can lose between activities. So even though uh, we are just sailing, they can just go out in the decks and experience a very beautiful landscape like you can see on this picture. And also sometimes when we have a lot of luck, especially in June, they might see the midnight sun when we are sailing in north. So um, that is on board. But once we go alongside, we offer um, our passengers three different shore excursions in every every uh, port or place we visit. So what we are trying to do is we are offering, yeah, all passengers something, you know, some excursion that suits them. 
they can choose either from a bus tour or, or a hunt tour or something else. So those who want to do something easy or, or not feel like hiking or doing active, they can go on the bus tour and walk less. But we still have hiking options and more actions, uh, action excursions for those who want to, for example, a little bit and do do other, yeah, some more um, action like stuff. Mm. And on, on our sure excursions, you know, uh, each part of Iceland is very different from another. The west fjords are very different from the south. And uh, the south is very different from the east, and the so we try to, uh, yeah, offer guests uh, the all of the highlights of Iceland. Of course, <laughs> everyone wants to see the puffin. You can see on this picture, and uh, normally uh, in the time we are doing the Iceland circ circumnavigation, uh, we see puffin almost every time. Uh, we try to offer those who want a little bit of action some action shore excursions like quad bike tour uh we visit glaciers uh, which is of course a, a big part of iceland and a huge part of the experience of our passengers whale watching uh we go so-called rip boats um and and take a look at, uh, most uh, often humpback whales while we are in husavik and waterfalls have over 10,000 waterfalls in Iceland, but we try to pick those beautiful ones. This one here is in the West Fjords. Uh, when we are alongside in East Fjord, we will visit uh, this one. Glacier Lagoon, also uh, a highlight of Iceland. There we go on these Femian boats and sail around the icebergs. And sometimes we also see a lot of birds and even seals, if you are lucky. And uh, this is also Tanyan as well. So, you know, uh, of course, uh, I don't have time to cover all of the shore excursions, because like I mentioned, we have three different options in every port we visit. So we have somewhere around 25 different options throughout the whole cruise for our passengers. And uh, so, so there's, yeah, so they have a lot to, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they need to decide quite precisely what they want to do because, you know, sometimes th there is so much to see in each one of them, each reports we are visiting. But, uh, yeah, uh, we have just to summarize everything. Um, yeah, we, we are on this vessel Ocean Diamond that was rated, uh, yeah, the last part actually this year use small boats to get on shore and try to visit the smaller ports of Iceland. Uh, our ice circumnavigation is uh, 10 days long. And uh, what what are we, we are really trying to do, like I also mentioned briefly earlier, we, we think we are doing things different than all of the other companies by bringing Iceland on board. I don't know about any other company that does that. And therefore, we think and we hope uh, that uh, our passengers experience Iceland in an even better way than every other company is offering. So, um, yeah, that was uh, everything I had to say at the moment. Um, this is our here um, information for reservation if you want to. Um, Take a look at that. Like Jana said uh, earlier, uh, this was also will also be put on YouTube. So if you uh, don't have time to save this information, you can always check that out, or she can send it to you. Uh, yes. So otherwise, I just want to uh, thank you for for coming and your attention. Uh, now is your time to ask me some questions, so I, I give the ball back to uh, Jenna. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Herman. That was fantastic. We have a lot of really great comments um, coming through. So if you do have any questions, now would be the time to um, type those through. As I mentioned, we will try to get to as many of them as possible. But again, if we don't get to one of your questions, we'll make sure to have an answer for you in the webinar follow-up. If anybody does have to take off early, we will be recording this webinar. So if you do need to leave, um, don't worry, I will make sure you get that. Um, I have a question for you, Herman, before we get started with the other ones. Do you have a favorite port or spot in Iceland to visit? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's it's very hard to choose one, but I really mm -hmm. like uh, one of the islands we, we are visiting, uh, Flate, that I showed you in the north, where we visit uh, the, uh, the, see all of the birds, and also Westman Islands is always, always one of my favorites because it's a volcanic island, and we go also on a zodiac cruise there and uh, see a lot of seabirds. Actually, I do a lecture about birds, so that is a little bit maybe why that is uh, that that is maybe the reason why I love those places. <laughs> Oh, so you you're a bird bird fan then? Yeah, yeah, I, I like watching birds. Perfect. Okay, so we have some questions coming through here. Um, there are a few. I'm just going to mention this right now before I get started. There's a few that are coming in um, that I will actually answer um, in relation to excursion prices, etc. And actually, I will say that I will send out a um, a. PDF on all of the different um, excursions and activities that you can do um, in, in addition to what's included in the main, um, included in the offer price. So I know we're getting some questions about that, so I will make sure to answer those. Um, for, with onboard talks, Herman, um, is there much focus on Icelandic culture and history, or is it mostly about what to expect in the next port? So what we do, uh, we do a port talk every single day uh, where we go briefly over the following day, tell the people uh, or our passengers a little bit about the town they are visiting, opening hours of museums um, and stuff like that, what excursions uh, they are going on on the following day, weather forecast and so on. And we also have um, a lecture about history on board. The also, what I want to mention on these various excursions themselves, our expedition team members are guiding the tours. So they will provide uh, our passengers with a lot of information about the culture. And uh, some of the places we are visiting on, on the um, Tour excursions include a lot of cultural experience, like so, uh, one of the tours is uh, shark tasting, and uh, another mm. one is where we visit, like um, yeah, like a Viking village. So, so we, we try, we really focus on culture on board, yeah. Um, and there's there's some questions about protocols with, with COVID and capacity. I don't know if you uh, want to can speak to any of that, Herman, um, or if you want to just explain about um, what the what the protocols will be for 2022 cruising. Yes. Yeah, so so what we did this summer, and we will most likely continue doing uh, next summer. We are following the local Icelandic measures each time. Uh, I was actually working on the COVID protocols uh, with uh, a few people from the office and we were talking to the Directorate of Health here in Iceland and they really recommended to us that we follow the local regulation and we are working very closely with them. So we are very confident uh, about that and, and actually everything this summer went fantastically uh, regarding uh, COVID. So, so of course, we, maybe we were lucky, but we, we had good measures going on. Perfect. Thank you. Um, there's a couple here that I'm just going to answer really quick before reverting back to you. Um, one of them being about, oh, sorry, I just lost it. Um, oh, the seasonality of the cruises, if there's a preferred season to go on the cruise. So I just wanted to mention that next year they will have departures starting from May 9th and going until July 20th. So that is the season that they will be cruising for 2022. 
Um, and then there was another question about different suite types um, of the different cabins. So I can send you out information on that included in the webinar follow-up so that you can see the different um, options for that. As Herman mentioned though, they are all outside, outside cabins. So every single one of those cabins will have a window. So it's uh, just different grades from there. Um, another question for you, Herman. Um, do do uh is there any ports where you can schedule a helicopter excursion during the cruise um yes uh, we should be able to organize that yeah uh there are a lot of helicopter tours going on right now in Reykjavik <laughs> due to the uh volcano that has been erupting I'm actually sleeping at the moment but uh yes for, we we should be able to organize that uh, for if if somebody wants to go on a on a helicopter excursion here. Yeah. Perfect. Um, there's just a couple couple more uh, questions that I'm going to answer, and then we if there if so if you have any last minute questions, please type them through. We'll try to get to them. But um, yes, all of the cabins have private ensuite bathrooms. Um, in terms of masks, Herman, are people wearing masks on board? Um. Well, we had it. We had it for for um, this summer because uh, uh, we were following the protocols here in Iceland. So um, we had it like cruises. Everybody needed to wear a mask. But as uh, as of now, I think uh, they will need to wear masks. Uh, but like I say, we we don't. If if the Icelandic authorities decide that they're not, it's not mandatory to wear masks. We will do the same. So, uh, but everybody can wear a mask, of course, if they want to. But we follow the the Icelandic authorities every step of the way. Perfect. All right. Well, I think we got through most of them. So anything, if you if you didn't get your question answered, I'll make sure to follow up with you and send you um, a document with more information about your specific question. But thank you so much to everybody for joining us. It was a pleasure to spend this time with you. And thank you, of course, as well, Herman, so much for um, tuning in in your evening time and off season as well. So we really appreciate uh, you being here with us today. That was a great insight into the behind the scenes of ISAN Pro Cruises. Yeah, thank you so much, Jenna. It was a pleasure uh, presenting uh, our cruise to you. I, I hope you, you really liked it. And we hope to welcome uh, your clients on board in 2022. So thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of your day.